Hi, it's Brett the Herbalist, and today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about sugar, and in particular, sugar addiction and how sugar affects weight loss, weight gain, and that sort of thing, and how you can curb sugar addiction and get out of that cycle of sugar addiction. So, not all sugar is the same, and we've all probably heard of um, refined sugar or table sugar or sucrose, which is the most common sugar that we, we use in our diets. And the thing with um, sucrose or um, normal table sugar is it's extracted from the sugar cane. And when you think about it, the process of extracting that white sugar from the sugar cane has a byproduct um, which is left from whatever else is in the sugar cane, and that's called blackstrap molasses. And you may have heard of blackstrap molasses because that's a super health product. So basically, what comes out of the sugar cane is super healthy and that's the blackstrap molasses and when you separate the sugar and the molasses you end up with refined white table sugar and in simple terms that's really no different to extracting cocaine from the coca leaves or you know any other kind of white refined powder which could be seen as a drug so interesting um, when you think of it that way Table sugar or white sugar is essentially a drug, very, very similar in its effect to things like cocaine or methamphetamine, which are highly stimulating and get your metabolism going and make you feel really good and, and almost high. And that's why we get addicted to sugar. Quite simple when you think about it, isn't it? Sugar is a drug. Okay, so let's give a little bit of background to sugar. You might be familiar with fats and how they come in different sort of sizes. You know, you've got short, medium and long chain fatty acids. And they're different sort of lengths of the molecule, the chain of molecule of fats. You've got the same with protein. So you've got amino acids, polypeptides, and then you've got protein. So you've got different lengths of the protein molecule. Well, the same thing happens with sugar. So you've got monosaccharides. And you've got disaccharides, or two sugars joined together. And then you've got polysaccharides, or long chains. So the monosaccharides are things like glucose, and fructose, and dextrose. So they cause a, a much more of a spike when you have a high intake of those monosaccharides. And then you've got disaccharides, things like uh, sucrose, or table sugar, lactose, and maltose. And those, those two sugar molecules join together. And then you've got the, the long chain sugar molecules or the polysaccharides. And those include things like glycogen that your body stores in the muscles and the liver for energy, stored energy, starch, which is a slower releasing polysaccharide. And then you've also got fiber. So things like fruit pectin and fiber and cellulose are what you call polysaccharides. And those are the ones that really are much slower digested and they cause a much slower uptake of sugar into the blood. And the interesting thing is with sugar, is that when you eat a processed food, which has either glucose or sucrose or fructose or high fructose corn syrup and that sort of thing in them, um, that really packs a punch as far as pumping up your blood sugar. And it gives you a rush or a high. And that's what the food manufacturers aim to do with their products is to give you a rush or a hit so that your brain gets a, a really um, a quick rush of sugar and it releases a whole lot of hormones and it gives you a, almost like a serotonin high. So you get addicted to that. And then after you've had your serving or your, you know, your product, um, you crash about an hour or so later and you need to have it again. So when you have a chocolate bar or a sugary drink or some kind of processed food snack, that's what they're doing. They're giving you the effect of pretty much like a drug like we talked about earlier. So it becomes addictive and you get this high and then you crash and you need it again and again. And that's where sugar addiction starts. And then you can get into, you know, when sugars are combined with processed fats into other foods like, say, ice cream and um, you get you know, those donuts that are really fatty and sugary com combination. That's really addictive because uh, you get a big rush from that and a lot of satisfaction. And what we need to do is curb that addiction and that craving to help not only with your body metabolism and losing weight, but also to get you out of that addictive cycle, which can get worse and worse and it can become quite emotionally 
stressful and draining on your body and it can interfere with the whole hormonal cascade in your body as well. So to deal with that, I'm going to give you a couple of tips. One is get your sugar from whole foods or plant foods. And the reason being is that with plant foods, you might get some simple sugar. You might get some fructose or some sucrose or glucose in those plant foods, but they'll be combined with what we talked about before, the longer chain sugars. So your disaccharides and your polysaccharides, which will stabilize and level out the sugar spike. So with plant foods, you get fiber and you get a lot of other nutrients as well. So your minerals, your vitamins, your antioxidants, and they all help stabilize your metabolism. So it's really important if you want to get off that sugar cycle, that addictive emotional eating cycle, then I suggest using some plant foods and taking them with you when you're traveling and when you go to work. And the best way to do that is to make a, a lunchbox or something, put in there some grapes or mandarins or bits of dried fruit, say prunes or raisins that you can snack a little bit at a time throughout the day. So slow and steady wins the race when it comes to addictive and emotional eating habits. Eat slow and steady. So snack on those raisins or those grapes or little bits of fruit throughout the day in between your meals. And at your meal times, have more fat. So you get more energy, sustained energy between those meals. So lots of avocado or coconut products or yogurt, oils and things like that. So that helps to stabilize your blood sugar a lot as well. And so that's, that's a great way to get through the day and to get rid of those snack cravings that might pop up when you crash. So that's a good place to start. The second thing I'd suggest is looking for sour and bitter in your food. In other words, things like pickles or pickled onions or gherkins, they're really good at and or lemons and you know, sour and bitter things are very, very good because what they do is they have a, an effect on your tongue, a reflex effect to your digestive system to stabilize the blood sugar and the insulin and support good digestion. So having those sour and bitter foods not only does that, but it also helps to get rid of that sweet craving taste. Um, and in herbal medicine, what we use are called bitters, which help get rid of the, the sweet craving. And they do that in two ways. One of them is on the tongue. Um, the more sour and bitter things you have on your tongue, the less you actually crave the sweet. And the less it tastes good, the more you get used to that sour and bitter. It's really, really healthy for your digestive system and insulin levels as well. So it helps in two ways. So introducing sour and bitter is a really good idea. And also on top of that is, of course, herbs and spices. So the more culinary herbs and spices and flavors that you can add into your main meals, the less you'll crave sugar. So lots of curry, lots of chili and garlic and things like that. Uh, onions are another great one. So yeah, herbs and spices and sour and bitter and introducing lots of other flavors and tastes. If you're having bland food all the time, then your body will naturally crave some strong taste and sugar could be the thing you go for. But if you're having a lot of sour and bitter and herbs and spices, your craving for sugar will diminish over time. And um, lastly, I should mention that we've got some herbs in our programs, uh, especially the Herbal Slim. It's got a product called Satisfed, which contains some of those bitters we talked about and sugar craving herbs, which help control the cravings. And um, so cactus is one of those or caroluma. In India, they use bitter melon. Bitter melon is a great way to stabilize your blood sugar, that bitter taste again. So yeah, those are my main tips for today. Um, look at small regular servings of plant-based sugar so you get those polysaccharides throughout the day to keep a steady blood sugar level. Have some good fats during your main meals. Make sure you have plenty of good fats there and look for the herbs and the spices and the culinary flavors. And what that'll do is it'll help stabilize and get rid of those sugar cravings. Also have a look at some of our self-healing methods and techniques to work on the mind because that always comes into it after prolonged periods of addictive and emotional eating and, and sugar cravings. I hope that's been helpful and look forward to talking to you again soon.